Hey guys, welcome back. So a couple of weeks ago, I asked you guys on Instagram to send me your scary stories. I told you to send in any paranormal experiences you've ever had, any experiences with sleep paralysis, any situation that you've ever had that has been weird, unexplainable, or creepy, anything that has made you feel genuinely scared. And I've gone over a couple of your submissions already, and a lot of them are really good, really scary, and I feel like it's perfect for this Halloween season. So, have them all on my phone i'm gonna read them for you and if you have a scary story that you didn't get to send me and you want to share go ahead and leave it in the comments and we can all talk about it after this video but with that being said let's get started so the first story that we're gonna read is from my friend daisy and her story goes a little something like this so it all started a year ago this time around i was laying down in bed and everything was off like no tv no light nothing except the neighbor's light kinda came through the crack of the window from our curtains. Pay attention, this is an important part. So I hate sleeping on the edge of the bed, but my boyfriend Robert had already fallen asleep and wouldn't move. So I got up to see if he would move to the other side of the bed, but before I could move, I started to hear cracking noises. And mind you, neither Robert or me were moving. Then it started to sound like someone was popping their fingernails. So I looked towards the closet and I can see it kinda open and I always close the closet cause ain't no demon getting me like that. <laughs> me. So that little light that I was talking about earlier was coming through the window and it was kinda pointing towards the closet door. So I was looking at it and the door slowly started to open. I'ma close that because I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> Sis, I started to hyperventilate and I couldn't even talk. So I quickly turned around to wake Robert up. I slowly started to turn back around and saw bony, skinny, old lady hands crawling on the floor. That's all I could see because the little light from the window was only shining on that part. All of a sudden, I saw the shadow start growing and that's when I had enough and yelled, Robert, get up. And as soon as I yelled, he woke up and everything just stopped and you can feel the air drastically change. To this day, I don't know if I was awake or asleep and maybe experiencing some type of sleep paralysis, but I was able to move during it all and I know in sleep paralysis, you can't move at all. I still can't explain what that was, but it's something I'll never forget. <sighs> Bitch, if I saw that. <laughs> Mm -mm. I'm moving out of the house. I would move out of the house. She says that she hasn't like seen or heard anything like creepy since then, but still like that's insane. I was like, girl, what if your closet is like a portal to like another dimension? And like that lady was like, <laughs> just like crossing over, just like, hey, <laughs> she's just crossing over like, hey girl. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that is definitely scary. So this next one is from my friend Debbie. She sent me a couple of stories and her stories, <sighs> they actually like like one of them i really got the, i like literally started my eyes started watering so be prepared so just a little bit of preface um debbie says that she lived in a haunted house that she would hear noises all the time that her dog would be like crying and barking at nothing like when scary things would happen so it's just like it's just also weird she would always hear like banging and like unexplainable noises so these stories are about the house that she used to live in thankfully she doesn't live there anymore but yeah Let's get into the story. So the first time I heard voices was when I got home from taking my dog to the vet. It was around 3 p.m. on a Friday. My son was staying at my parents' house for the weekend. It was just me, my brother, and my husband at the house. I remember falling asleep on the couch downstairs and I had my dog's bed next to me on the floor. So I pass out and since it's 3 p.m. it's still daylight. I wake up around 8 p.m. and it's pitch black in my house because I didn't turn on any of the lights and all I hear is my dog crying. So I get up thinking she needs to use the bathroom. So I let her outside so she can go potty in the backyard. I turn on the lights for the backyard and open the shutters to our back door to see if she's going and she's just staring back into the house crying and barking. So I let her back in and she's just barking and crying. I turn on all the lights downstairs and I can hear my brother sleeping slash snoring on the couch upstairs in the loft. My dog is still freaking out crying, so in my head, I'm like, oh, maybe my husband is hurt in the garage and she can sense it. So I go in the garage to check on my husband and I ask him if he's okay. And he says, yeah, why? And I'm like, I don't know, MJ just keeps freaking out. So I go back inside and sit on our couch in the living room. The way our living room was set up was that when I sat on the couch, my back was facing towards the kitchen. And I go to check my phone and my dog is still crying and barking next to me. And then out of nowhere, she stops and I look at her and she's just staring behind me. 
Her hair was standing up on her back. Then I hear my husband's voice behind me go, baby? And my heart sank and my stomach hurt so bad because I knew it wasn't him. He was still in the garage and I knew this. Look, I'm already starting to cry, like literally. <laughs> I don't know, like I'm so sensitive to this stuff. He was still in the garage and I knew this because with our alarm system, whenever a door or window opens, we hear beep, beep, beep. And the last time I heard that sound was when I went to the garage to check on my husband. And then I hear the voice again go, baby. And it just sounds like my husband. Then it whispers, baby. And then it said it one last time, but really deep not in my husband's voice and it says it again baby and that's when i stood up and started crying and yelling for my husband to see if he was inside and he wasn't so me and my dog ran upstairs and i told my brother what happened while i was crying it sounds so dumb but it's like when i have no explanation of where the voice is coming from it freaks me out and if that's not bad enough she sent in a video that she took of her dog crying. Um, let me see if I can find it. She said, I have a video of my dog staring into our loft that's just dark and she's growling. Let me see if I can find it and I'll send it to you. So that's uh, terrifying. <laughs> Hello. You're gonna die in seven days. Oh, I've been expecting your call. Oh my God. Hi. So the next story that we have is from my friend Hill and she sent in a story. So last summer, I went with my sister and my mom all the way to Philadelphia because my sister was going to a dance summer intensive over there, and me and my mom were going with her to be chaperones for the program. The place they had us, the chaperones, and the students staying in while the program was going on were at these dorms at this college that is dead ass in the middle of the woods. The first night we spent there, we were alone on the third floor because we had gotten there a day earlier than everyone else. The next morning, my sister told me that she had sleep paralysis. She gets it often, so it wasn't anything out of the ordinary, but it was still weird. A couple of days later, I was doing my makeup in the bathroom of me and my mom's room, and I heard one of the chairs move, but then I looked into the room and there was nobody even there. I literally got chills. The same type of thing would happen a lot to my sister and my mom whenever they were alone in the bathroom in our room. They would always hear the furniture move even though there was nobody there. A few of the other girls had similar things happen to them. They even named the ghost Henrietta. The ghost never even really did anything that scary. She always just moved stuff around so they would joke a lot about it. My dad was back home during all of this and we'd FaceTime him and tell him about it because it was so weird. Then when we finally got back home and reunited with my dad, we made Made a joke about Henrietta as we had started doing that a lot after her visits. Basically, us talking about Henrietta prompted my dad to tell us this. He looked into what me and my sister were talking about to see if anyone else had experienced stuff like that at the specific college and he said that he found out that a lot of people who stayed at those dorms had experienced sleep paralysis and sometimes they would see an old woman standing next to them during it. We thought it was crazy since my sister had sleep paralysis the first night we got there, even though she didn't see a lady during it. But when we got home the first night back, my sister had a dream that there was a lady in the corner of the room and she said that it was Henrietta. I don't know how she knew it was, but she was terrified because she thought Henrietta followed us from Pennsylvania. That's it. LOL. Okay, so this is going to be the last submission and it's for my friend Anna. So, where do I start? My grandma and one of my aunts were really into witchcraft and every time I would go to Mexico at my grandma's house, I would notice really weird things happening. For example, I would sometimes see the Virgin Mary upside down and little black ashes on my grandma's table stand with photos under it of my uncles and aunts together. It was always a weird vibe when you would walk into the house. So one day, my grandparents kicked out my oldest aunt, which I don't even consider an aunt at this point, so let's call her 
the witch. So the day my grandpa died, my cousins found voodoo dolls of my grandparents under my grandpa's bed. One of them had a pin in the middle of his chest and the other one had the leg cut off. We were confused, but didn't think much of it. We later came to realize that this was going to be done to them. My grandpa was the closest person to me and he unfortunately died a few years ago due to breathing complications in his chest. My grandma as well had diabetes and had her leg amputated and died a year ago today on October 17th. It's so crazy. Also, I'm really sorry about your grandparents. So that was one story. She also sent in one more. Another creepy story I have is that many neighbors would tell stories of a creepy owl that was very ugly with red eyes who lived in the trees. One day, my brother and dad saw it and shot it with a rifle. My dad claims that when he saw the owl fall, he saw arms extending out instead of wings. After they saw it, they put it in a bag and threw it in the trash. The next day they checked and the owl wasn't in the bag. A few days later, my other aunt called me saying that there was word around the town that the witch was paralyzed from her spine down and was in the hospital. This left my dad thinking that maybe it was the witch aunt trying to spy on us in the form of an owl. However, to this day, we don't know if that's the truth. Y'all, this is crazy. This is crazy. Oh, I hate that. I really hate that the camera's not focusing on me right now. I'm talking about like witchcraft and like ghosts. Please focus. I'm gonna cry. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> so those were the scariest submissions that you guys sent me. I am terrified. So that's great. But I hope that you enjoyed watching it. I hope that this gave you a fun little scare, a fun little fright. If you guys like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe down below for new videos every single week. Uh, excuse me. As always, I love you guys very much and I will see you on the next one. Bye.